Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic's video attempting the GCHQ Christmas Challenge for 2022. Um, GCHQ put out, almost every year I would say, they put out some sort of Christmas um, puzzling content and it's f it's very interesting sometimes. The, the puzzles can vary in difficulty. And the impression I'm getting from this article, the challenge returns for a second year with a series of fiendish brain teasers and a final twist, is that it'll be like the Christmas card one they did before. I'm not sure if we did it on the channel. I think I did, in fact, or maybe on Patreon. But um, we're going to have a look at this one. So download the 2022 Christmas challenge at the bottom of the page. Let's read what they say. Today we've released the 2022 GCHQ Christmas challenge. The puzzle, masterminded by a team of our in-house puzzlers, features on our director's annual Christmas card. The card is sent to partners in the UK and around the world who work with us to counter threats, including hostile state activity, terror groups, and organized crime gangs. Wow. Whilst the challenge has been designed for schools and colleges, we're also encouraging the wider public to take on the challenge to pit their wits against our puzzlers. The 2022 Christmas challenge features seven fiendish puzzles based on the seven disciplines of languages, engineering, code breaking, analysis, maths, coding, and cybersecurity, all key skills needed at GCHQ to help keep the country safe. But this year's challenge comes with a twist. Once you solve all seven puzzles, you'll need to think outside the box, using the design on the front of the card to assemble the answers, forming three separate what three words locations. Joining the three place names together will reveal our special festive answer. And uh, there will be a solution tomorrow. So we'll put this out today, I imagine, assuming we can get there. Right, there's a quote from director of GCHQ, Sir Jeremy Fleming. Blah, 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 blah. Here we go. We're going to just download the challenge. Then I will try. Ooh, that's not going to look good. Um, oh, OK. Maybe you can see. Let's move me. I don't know. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. There we go. That's better. Now we can see the whole thing, hopefully. Um, although, on the other hand, I may have to zoom in a bit. But let's let's read what we've got. So we've got this design. Oh, that's the front of the card, because the card folds. Six of the puzzles below have one-word answers. Using the design on the front of the card, arrange these to form two what three words addresses. The remaining puzzle contains a third address. Once you've found the locations, take a single word from each one to find our seasonal message. OK, so this first one, I'm going to have to zoom in. And I think this may happen considerably. So now let's see if you can know. We're going to need to bring that across to there. And I'm going to zoom in further. Let's go full 200%. That's almost too much. But actually, that might be the best thing for this puzzle. Right, Rudolph needs to escape from this cyberspace maze by reaching the flag. So Rudolph's down here. The flag's over here. He starts where indicated and can move north, east, south or west to points along the same layer, or he can ascend or descend between layers as shown by the dashed lines. He can only go in the direction of the arrows. If he touches a key, then all the gold arrows will swap directions. So we have gold and black arrows at the moment, and the gold arrows will swap directions if Ru Rudolph I was going to call him Rufus, if Rudolph touches a key. What is his shortest route to get to the flag? And can you describe it using one seven-letter word? Right, well, where would he go? He could go up. Then he would have to go along and along. Then he'd touch this key, and the gold arrows would change direction. So he could go back and back further. Then it could come across to this key, which would change all the gold arrows. Oh, it would change them again, but it would leave them back in the original state. So it'd be... <coughs> Doesn't feel to me like that's the quickest route. So maybe what we need to think about is how we're going to generate a seven letter word. And I think there is a chance that that is going to be using the 
A and D. Ascend and descend is quite an interesting choice rather than up and down. And then west, east, north and south. So, if we did what we were suggesting and went ascend, east, east, that would spell A, E, E, which is implausible. So he could go east and ascend, and then he'd have to go east, and that's E, A, E, and that's also implausible. So let's assume he goes south first, S, then east, E. Okay, this is at least possible. Then he's either going to go north, sen, or ascend, and then we've got to C. So let's try the north, sen. Then he's going to have to ascend, S, E, N, A. That's not so promising. And then he's going to have to go east. And that's just broken again. Right, so S, south, east, ascend. Then he's going to go west. C, W. Well, it could spell seaweed. The key changes the directions. And now he can go east and east and down. And it's right. Okay. So what he does, Rudolph, is he goes south. He goes east and he ascends and goes west. And that's sort of spelling S-E-A-W. Then that changes the directions of the arrows and he goes east and east and down. And that spells seaweed. And that is a word from the cybersecurity puzzle. Right, languages next. I hope you can still see this. No, let me push it there so my fizzog isn't in the way. If a French allurophile fancies a sh chat, what does a Polish cyanophile fancy? Well, an allurophile is a cat lover and a chat is French for a cat. Cyanophile is from the Greek for dog because a cynic was originally someone who had a dog-like outlook, I believe. Well, I mean, that much I know. I dare say it's cognate with um, canis in Latin as well. But I'm pretty sure a cynophile is a dog lover. However, I do not know the Polish for dog, which I suspect is the answer to this puzzle. So I'm going to quickly look that up and tell you what I find. Apparently it is, well, piesh is what I'm going to say, but it looks... It, it reads like the word pies in English, which is quite amusing. Uh, I did not know that at all, but there we go. I don't think we can be prevented from looking things up if we're working for GCHQ. Now, let's move on to formation, coding. Replace all the blue cells with a letter from part. Replace all the green cells with a letter from eyes. Replace all the gold cells with a letter from uncurl. And after each step, you should have three three-letter words in the rows of the grid. And you need to finish with a nine-letter word in the same formation as formation, which is itself made up of four mat and ion. Ooh. Sorry, I hope you could read that. Right. So this is just going to have to be a bit of hit and hope, I think. Um, gold cells with a letter from uncurl. It's quite likely to be a C in the first instance to begin a three-letter word that can also begin a nine-letter word. Then, if that was right, uh, the blue cell... Oh, that, yes, would... Well, it could be an R or it could be an A, but C, R, something. Oh, that's strange. R is not coloured. I'd assumed we had three of one colour, three of another, and three of another. Oh, so the R stays the same. It doesn't get replaced. Oh, that's very surprising. Right, so I think we're spelling car in the top row. Um, and then in the next row, P-A-R-T to begin with, then E-Y or S, then U-N-C or R or L. The word I'm thinking of is carpentry. And that does work here. Car works, pen works, and then we'd be replacing I with something from part, O with something from uncurl, and N with something from um, eyes. So it does work. So 
the word is carpentry here. And yeah, I'm just going to put that down to sort of crossword brain and knowing what, what is a plausible nine letter word made up, made up of three words of three letters each. Right, next round, analysis. The director has written his usual Christmas message, but now uncover the odd one out amongst the words forming these two sentences. It's odd because it's not odd. Oh, that's absolutely gorgeous. Right, we need the odd word out. So it's the odd one out amongst the words in these two sentences. And I mean, that's the two sentences that we're looking at here. It's very self-referential. Um, and they all have a word, a letter length that is odd, except for one word, and that is director. So that must be the solution to this puzzle. I think that must be right, yes. I mean, you can see that the word lengths are 3, 8, 3, 7, 3, 5, 9, 7, 3, 3, 7, 3, 3, 3, 3, 7, 3, 5, 7, 5, 3, nine three three seven three 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 and i'm very impressed because that is quite naturalistic sentence writing for quite an odd constraint okay but we can move on to the engineering puzzle now this is cogs and they are turning and they are presumably meshing so i hope you can read the let me just i don't know if you can read the letters and numbers on here they're quite small but I will interpret them for you. So this first cog has a six in the middle, and I think that's because it has six letters on. And we've got this instruction of turn 20. So if we turn it 20 clicks to the in the clockwise direction, which is indicated, we'll go round three full times of the six letters each, and then go two more letters, and that'll bring the P to the top where this arrow is pointing. So I think we get a P from that. Now, turning that cog clockwise 20 turns will turn this cog anti-clockwise 20 turns because of the meshing. And there are eight letters on this. So we'll go around twice to get to 16 and then another four letters. So it'll be the letter on the bottom will go to the top. And we've now got PI. Now, we have to be careful here because these cogs don't mesh. Look, they don't actually meet in the middle. They are joined by a, a chain. So this cog is going to go anti-clockwise as well, just like the second one did. And it's rotating 20. It's nine letters big or nine cog teeth big. So it turns around twice and then two more letters, and that brings a C to the top. So we've got PIC, that does mesh with this one, which is now going clockwise 20. And since the number on it is a 5 and is divisible by 20, it'll bring that same letter to the top, is a K. That's gone clockwise 20, that's joined by a chain to the last one. That will also go clockwise 20, it's got a 7 in the middle. It'll go... It'll go round twice fully and once almost completely. And that'll bring this Y all the way, oops, that Y all the way round to the top. And the word we get from that is P-I-C-K-Y, picky. Now, code breaking, code breaking. Xibu for gzbset, bisft, jut, pvuk, psi, dot, hsj, dot, sfk, p. <coughs> Jot. Now, that's very strange, but obviously it's just going to be, given that we've got no extra instructions, it's likely to be a letter-for-letter -letter transposition cipher. And the word, the, the punctuation is very odd. That four in the middle is strange. Um, this looks a bit like an address, a web address. And this word can definitely translate to address. There aren't that many words that have a double letter in second and third place, a different double letter at the end of seven. I mean, there'll be others. Let me just think of some in a moment. We could have a look-see or a... Um, yeah, no, there'd be a few that end in ness, I suppose. Illness, for instance. Actually, it could be illness. But I quite like address. 
partly because of the punctuation here. So if that is address, that means R becomes S in this code, E becomes F, and S becomes T. So actually, every letter is just moving on one in the alphabet, and that works for the whole of address. So we can go through this going W, H, A, T, O, oh, what three words, which is this website that pinpoints um, small areas by words. Um, what three words address is O U T out outboard dot G R I D grid dot rejoins. What three word address is out the outboard dot grid dot rejoins? We've got one puzzle left to do, yes, mathematics. If two equals growth and six equals exist, then nine equals what seven letter word, which describes what you'll be doing with your presents on Christmas Day. There's a few ways to get at that, but the, the official way, I think, is to spot that the words growth and exist are hiding a backwards representation of the number. So number two, Look, it's written in there backwards, T-W-O. Number six is written in here, S-I-X, and therefore we need to find a seven-letter word which has nine written backwards in it, which is E-N-I-N. -N. And I mean, the clue is pretty clear that you'll be opening your presents on Christmas Day. So opening is the answer. Now, let us go back to the instructions. Using the design on the front of the card, arrange these to form two what three words addresses. Right, we will go back to, no, not that, that resolution. And look, we've got these little symbols at the beginnings of the puzzles. So that cyber security symbol is here, following the analysis puzzle. Okay, so look, there's a set of three of these puzzles in the middle of the Christmas tree. And the answers to them were... Director, seaweed, and which one is it? The coding one, carpentry. Um, what I need to do is call up what three words here. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I think we can just press enter and go with... What was it? Director Seaweed Carpentry. And that'll take us somewhere in the world, I believe. Ooh. We're on the corner of Mill Lane and Market Lane, but where are we? I don't know. We're in a town called Greet. Ah, well, that could certainly be part of a message. Okay, that's encouraging. Oh, where am I? Sorry, I'm here. Um, no. Let's, I don't know what's happened here. Let's go back to 75%. There we go. Sorry about that. Right, now. Greet is from the... Okay, there was a section above with some more of these symbols. So the mathematics one is opening the globe. Oh, in a speech bubble, that's the language one. So that's pies and the cog... Oh, sorry, these symbols are given. That was picky. So opening pies picky is the first word I should have got. Or the first... Not necessarily word, but place. Ooh, where's that? Okay, well, extend that out. Christmas Island National Park. We're on Christmas Island. Okay, so I think we can take the word Christmas from that. And then we have Christmas greet. I presume we're going to finish with ings, but we're going to need this code breaking thing. Now, that said, outboard.grid.rejoin. I think it wasn't recoils, was it? No, I think it was rejoins. Output grid rejoins. Enter. 
And there we are. We're in a town called Ings. I hope you can see that. I mean, I, when I say a town, I can't move that off it. Um, but it does say Ings there. And that's in the Lake District, apparently, and has the uh, Lake Dis Lakeland Farm Visitor Center on it. And in fact, what three words takes us straight to this bit of road beside it. Um, and there we go. So we got Christmas, Greet and Ings. And oops, and I believe that the director's message to us, therefore, is Christmas greetings. And that's the seasonal message from the GCHQ Christmas card this year. Very well done if you worked your way through that. Um, entertaining without being incredibly difficult. Good for schools and colleges, definitely. And a fun challenge as always. Happy to bring you the answer here on Cracking the Cryptic. And I hope that was of some use to you. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.